Sheena Quick. Yeah, Sheena! Sheena, you put a report out yesterday, a tweet out yesterday of David Tepper leaving the locker room, and I believe what you said was, <laughs> angrily, he said, F dash dash dash. Uh -huh. Then this morning, and, <laughs> and then this morning, Frank Reich has been relieved of his duties as the head coach. Uh, I believe Jim Caldwell will be a senior consultant on the offensive side of the ball. Coach Tabers of the special teams, Chris Tabers, will be the interim head coach. They have a season left, and now Frank Reich has become the first coach in the history of the NFL to be fired in back-to-back -back seasons. When was the writing on the wall, and uh, what is Carolina's reaction to this, Sheena? Uh, for me, the writing was on the wall when he took the play calling duties back. Uh, Frank Wright knew that he was on borrowed time. And I guess he figured, you know, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down with my own playbook calling my own plays. So for me, that was the writing on the wall. It was just kind of a matter of time at that point. When you saw Tepper come out of that locker room, was he saying that so you guys saw that he was mad? Like, was it like, uh, hey, I want to let you know I'm not happy with what happened in there as well? No. No. No, actually, um, it, was, there, it was only myself and one other media member that were outside of the interview room because the interview room was right next to the locker room. So as I walked up, I did see Nicole Tepper, and she was pretty pissed. She still spoke and smiled, and seconds later is when um, David Tepper walked out, and they left with their handlers, and he was just really, really exasperated. He didn't say it to anyone in particular, but you know how things are just so messed up that you have to just let out an F-bomb. That's what that was. A billionaire having handlers is certainly uh, something something as we move forward. Well, I don't know. I think they were handlers. I mean, they weren't security guards. They were just... I don't, I, I don't know. Tepper <laughs> Tepper has a meeting with every coach he's ever had. I don't know if he has anybody handling him, but <laughs> if he does have handlers, I love it. How does Carolina respond to this now? How do the fans feel? What do you think is next for the Panthers? Oh, the fans are excited. They are moving on and hoping that they get Ben Johnson next year. Uh, I wish... Well, I'm sure you guys have seen some of the tweets. We've been on, like, Frank Wright pack watch since the Colts game, really. Oh, so I, I think that everybody's excited. Now everybody's just kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop because the thoughts are here that Scott Fitter is next out the door. Now, the timing of that, I'm not sure. But for some reason, the Panthers like to fire GM, fire head coach, fire GM, fire head coach. And that may be why there's a disconnect and why they can't have any continuity at that um, head coaching position. But I think both of them are going to be out for a fresh slate. Okay, so is there a fear at all that Tepper's never going to have enough patience to get to a point where you guys will have a winner down there? Is that a is that a thought? That is that is a fear. That is a fear. And, you know, there was literally one guy that was willing to die on the hill that Frank Wright shouldn't have been fired today because it's week 12. Everybody else was like, nah, he got to go. Um, and, and that's one of those things that we were told in the offseason that David Tepper was letting the football people do the football things. And, you know, of course, when the season started spiraling out of control, now we hear that, you know, he was meddling in the quarterback decision. So I'm, I'm not sure it's going to take him hiring a football operations person. Because clearly he doesn't have the patience and he doesn't have luck, good luck either. Yeah, he needs a football handler. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't he? He, needs he, does. he needs handler. a football handler. That's exactly what he needs. He does. Instead of all the other handlers he's got around, yeah. let's get a football and handler. He, and he's a proud owner, too. Like, the man has been getting embarrassed week after week. You know, you guys' his owner was down there dancing to the meat meal in the well, visitor's locker room. Jerry Jones stuff that's not holding too. press conferences. Right. Well, and then Jerry Jones is holding press conferences, and then you're doing a silent count at home. Like, the morale is down, and that has to be getting to David Tepper. He's kind of – Carolina has become the get-right game that everybody looks forward to, where if your team is struggling, all you got to do is – when you see Carolina on the schedule, you know, that's a dub. And that's just not a good feeling, especially for somebody like David Tepper. There was some stat about Bryce Young being ranked like 431st out of 431 quarterbacks being ranked for something. I, I forget, maybe points per play or something like that. I forget what it is. Or yards per play. Bryce Young still the guy. I mean, we still, we all, everybody I, in Carolina believes he's still the guy that just has not been an opportunity for him to be good yeah. at all this year with the O line and the way everything else is. Everybody absolutely thinks that he's still the guy. I mean, of course, you're going to have a portion of the fan base that is seeing CJ Stroud absolutely falling out. So that doesn't help Bryce's case at all. But you, you see what he's working with. I mean, the offensive line is out there grasping air. Um, he's on his back or face down on the ground so many times. When he does get a second to throw the ball, there's not a ton of separation with the wide receiver. So the gist is that he's the guy, but they have to get some other guys around him. D-Buck, go ahead, pal. 
Yeah, Sheena, why uh, Chris Tabor? Now, I've, a lot of people would expect probably Jim Caldwell, somebody with head coaching experience to jump in there. But we know Tepper probably is having some buyer's remorse with letting uh, Wilkes walk out of the door. So why Tabor instead of one of those guys that have some head coaching experience? And who is Tabor? Because you don't. Like, if, long, Chris Tabor is special. He's the special teams coordinator. And to be honest with you, his unit is the only unit that is consistently performing. But he also doesn't have head coach aspirations. So there's no pressure that, you know, I, I'm not sure how, how much you can turn it around. You're not going to get a Steve Wilkes turnaround at the end of this season because there's no Steve Wilkes in the building right now as far as culture and, and things of that nature. But, um, no, Jim Caldwell. Jim Caldwell's been chilling. Like he's really just out here vibing. Like I, I don't know how involved he's been in any of the offensive decisions thus far. But if you're if you're David Tepper, do you want to have a situation where Jim Caldwell comes in here and is a rock star, and then you feel obligated to retain him, and then you don't? Yeah. So then you'll have back to back situations like yep. you did with Steve Will. Well, Will Brinson put together a graphic about pre Tepper, post Tepper here. I think Tepper is looking for anybody to have success. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Somebody, now, now, somebody, anybody. He's not scared to make a move, though, because he owns the soccer team, too. Yep. And he's fired three of their coaches in the last 16 months <laughs> yeah, as well. He did. Uh, yeah. Tepper wants to win now. And if you can't do that, you'll be out the door. But what happens if with yeah. salary caps and negotiations and contracts and schemes? and strategies that he can't just turn around in 12 months. I'm not saying Frank Reich was the guy that was going to be able to do it, but at some point, yeah. he's going to have to let that thing breathe and get a reset. We shall yeah. see. We appreciate the hell out of you, Sheena. Thanks, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Sheena Quick. Yes, you know. Okay, so let's talk about it. And I just kind of alluded to it a little bit there. None of us said Frank Reich was the right guy to get hired in Carolina. No, no way. Okay. We're all very baffled by it. Yep. We're all very confused by it. We're here in Indianapolis. So we actually see and saw what happened with the Colts with Frank Reich. There for a little bit, yeah, we're going on a run. Oh, my God, this is a guy. He was an assistant coach with the Colts whenever Peyton Manning was the quarterback here. I actually knew him very well from that exact time. He coached me. Frank Reich coached me on how to be third-string quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. He is nothing but a great guy. Everybody absolutely loves him. His history on the field, obviously the greatest backup quarterback in the history of pro ball mm -hmm. and college ball. Mm -hmm. When he was backup quarterback in Maryland, he came in and led one of the biggest comebacks in the history of college football. And then the NFL, he did the same exact thing. This is not about Frank Reich the human being, but Frank Reich the coach has seemingly gone terrible in his last two stints. I said it to Sheena there, he's the first NFL quarterback in the history of the league. It's been around a long time. Long time. A lot of people have coached. Mm -hmm. First one ever to get fired in back-to-back -back seasons. Crazy. And when he got fired from Indianapolis here, it was after an embarrassing performance against the New England Patriots, but it wasn't just embarrassing on the field. Behind the scenes, what was going on in the building, his team's culture was also completely dead. Comple people late to meeting, team meetings people late to, treatments people missing and being late to. Had guys, numerous guys, gambling on and against the Indianapolis Colts who were playing for the Indianapolis Colts. Whenever you say culture, when people talk about it, it was dead and died here in Indianapolis whenever Frank Reich was the head coach. Am I blaming Frank Reich for that? No. I've blamed the locker room for that as well. That can't happen. The leaders that were in there, one of them now gone, and mm -hmm. Darius Shaquille Leonard, they let that happen under their watch as well, which I publicly projected and said, like, hey, you guys are ruining what the Colts are. But that happened under Frank's leadership. So whenever it all kind of falls apart in Indianapolis and then he immediately gets the opportunity again with the number one overall pick in Carolina, I think to myself, is this what Frank really needs or wants in his life? 